winds of change are blowing through Raider Nation. And Silver and Black Today keeps you up to date with the latest news and views about your Las Vegas Raiders. Touchdown, Las Vegas! With insight, opinions, and interviews, we're on the cutting edge of what's happening now. Now, now, with the latest on your Raiders and the NFL, your host, Scott Goldbranson and Mo Moten. All right, it is time to fire up the engine again. It's time for Silver and Black Today, an Odyssey Sports original podcast covering the Las Vegas Raiders. Scott Branson, along with Mo Moten. He is the senior NFL writer over at Bleach Report covering the NFL. Catch him at x.com. Mo Moten, M-O-E-M-O-T-O-N. I am at LV Gully, the show SNB Today. If you haven't already subscribed to the show on the audio side, please do so wherever you get your audio. Just look for Silver and Black Today. Also, if you're watching us on YouTube, Hit that subscribe, the thumbs up button, and that notifications bell. That way, you know every time we have a new show. We are here talking Raiders football, and Mo is back with us. We had a busy week last week. Mo uh, is back, and we're going to get his kind of impression of what the Raiders have done in the free agent market so far. Remember, yes, it started last week, and yes, it goes into this week, but there's more time, too. We have up until... Uh, the end of the league, excuse me, up until the draft coming up in April to see what the Raiders are up to before they get to the draft. So we're going to talk about that. In the first segment, we're going to talk through acquisitions, what they've done, what they haven't done. The second segment, we're going to talk about quarterbacks, specifically that position and the need that the Raiders still have there. And then lastly, we'll talk about the rest of the AFC West. Did the Raiders keep pace? Are they ahead of pace? Are they behind the pace? Not only in the AFC West, but in the AFC, so we'll get into that. So, Mo, we, uh, we're, we're getting back in touch with you here after you were crazy last week covering the entire league. Uh, let me ask you this. When you look at the Raiders' situation, you look at what they did last week, tell me what they addressed most of all that you feel good about if you're a Raiders fan coming out of the first week of free agency. Definitely has to be the free agent line. Uh, the free agent line, the defensive line. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Well, I know what you meant. The, the first, the first free agent that they signed that sent shockwaves was the Christian Wils- Wilkins signing, and automatically you're like, okay, we're off to the races. The Raiders are trying to build, as I've said throughout the offseason, hashtag build a bully. They bring in <laughs> Christian Wilkins, who's going to be the tag team partner for Max Crosby on on the front line, and then over the past few days, they they've re-signed Adam Butler. They've re-signed John Jenkins, so you can tell what the Raiders' aim was as far as what they were going to do. Their, I, I would guess their priority in free agency was to rebuild and bring back guys on that front line. So the Raiders are, are intent, as I've said, to build the defense inside out because because as we we're recording this, no big splashes at cornerback yet. So Not yet. if I'm a Raider fan, I'm saying, okay, the Raiders are trying to go after Patrick Mahomes, obviously. They're trying to go after Justin Herbert, obviously, and any quarterback that steps on the field. And you do that by building a strong defensive front, and that's what they've done. They have, and uh, I agree with you. I mean, clearly, those signings, not only the Christian Wilkins signing, which was right out of the gate, so people got really yeah. excited. The, the the Raiders active. We expected them to be, right? We, were, we weren't we were sure what would happen. Chris Jones goes to the Chiefs, back, back to the Chiefs. That was sort of came out a few days before. We knew that was going to happen. And so then Christian Wilkins was out there, of course, uh, still there. And and you wondered, okay, are they going to go for that? Or are they going to just wait and address it in the draft? And clearly they went out and got him. Give him a big contract, right? I mean, you look at what the Raiders have done there and, and they've doubled down on the defense. And I think it was a good strategy, right? Because as you said, you got to build the trenches. Now you look at that and you say, okay, now with him and Max Crosby, Jenkins back, you have now also uh, uh, Butler back. They have a nice group there. You need to add some depth. You need to add some young talent there too, which is nice, right? You have Tyree Wilson who's moving inside outside as we saw last year, but you can now get a kid in the draft whenever you decide to draft on the defensive line or at edge as well. And and they can rotate in. There's no pressure on them, right? You're not going to be a high draft pick on the defensive side. That defense is bolstered already. The cornerback uh, situation, Mo, you talked about that as well. So we have to talk about what they haven't addressed yet. Now, Trudevarius White is visiting the Raiders over the next day or two. Um, I don't look at him as anything too exciting. I look at him as a 
as a guy who needs to prove himself after two straight years of injuries and lack of productivity with the Bills, he spent his entire career there, certainly a talented guy, a talented player. He's coming in to visit the Raiders and the Rams, so we'll see what happens there. But when you look at that, I know you ran a story, I think it was last week, about remaining free agents out there to target for the Raiders. When you look at that cornerback position that still needs to be addressed, I know they will address it at some point in the draft. I'm, I'm certain of that. But when you look at the veterans still available, who out there would you target if you're the Raiders to come in and be on the opposite side of Jack Jones and start in that lineup? The two guys I'm looking at right now would be Adore Jackson, who mm -hmm. played here under Patrick Graham in New York with the Giants, and Michael Davis, who was it who was with Tom Telesco or Tom Telesco, I would say signed him as a, as an undrafted free agent in 2017, who was a starter with the Chargers. So. Mm -hmm. Michael Davis is has the size, uh, not a speed guy, but if you against, if you have to go up against physical receivers, uh, he's your guy. Adoree Jackson is more of the smaller, more athletic cornerback, mm -hmm. also playing on special teams. So those are the two names that I look at because of the links to Patrick Graham and Tom Telesco, uh, respectively. Right, and so you look at that and you say, okay, I, that's what I figure between now and the draft could be this week it could be next week you know you, there's no hurry on these deals remember uh, those big names that went off the board early those were the top tier free agents there's still some great free agents out there who will find homes but the the teams are taking their time with these folks and deciding whether or not it's the right fit and so you'll see a lot of these visits popping up and so i wouldn't get i think a lot of raider fans were getting very nervous like well they started so fast and then okay now we're not doing anything and this team makes that move and this team that makes that move especially if it's a guy that the raiders could have targeted but again they're going to i think depending on not only the financial situation but also the player and the fit it's hard you can see a good player mo and, and we talked about this with the russell wilson situation right you can see a good player on the market and you say, wow, that that's a position of need for the Raiders, but it's not always the best fit from a locker room perspective, from a cultural, from a personality perspective. That sounds like what I said about Russell Wilson, just saying mm -hmm. about the cultural yeah. locker room fit. And we also have to understand too, that we don't know what the Raiders have cooking behind the scenes. I, right. I'm not, I'm not trying to break news here or anything, but who knows? They could be working on the trade. I know a lot of Raider fans want to see the Raiders trade for a cornerback. I don't think they go that route because the cornerbacks that the fans are talking about are highly paid. And I think they're knowing that this is a pretty good cornerback draft coming in, especially at the mm -hmm. top. I think the Raiders are going to invest in the, in the position and that, and that, uh, in that approach. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And that's the thing. It's a good, I'm glad you mentioned trades because there, there were a few, we know that, right. We saw, of course, Justin Fields finally gets traded, gets traded to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh completely revamps their quarterback room, now with Russell Wilson and clear, clearly indicated publicly, Justin Fields is the backup. He is not there to compete this year for the starting role. So it's going to be interesting to see if the Steelers also uh, uh, do give him his fifth year option, which is $25.2 million. So we'll see what happens on May 2nd. So we got some time there. But your point about the trades, I think you, there, there were less trades this year than last year because we had some early trading up on the dra in the draft, obviously for the two quarterbacks that people were looking at last year, Bryce Young and of course, CJ Stroud. But I anticipate between now and the draft, more trades, not only of picks, but of players. Because you, again, you have that June 1 designation for the salary cap and for contracts. So I think you'll see the Raiders involved. I would say they're gonna be involved in at least one trade. And that is, a, I, I agree with you. I think it's gonna be around a cornerback or maybe another position to need, we'll see. But uh, that trade market will start to heat up now between now and April. We got a month until the draft, Mo. So it's not like it's a quick turnaround. We have a little bit of time here. Yeah, I, I anticipate the Vikings moving up somewhere from three to five. Of course, they acquired another first round pick from the Texans. So they're they're armed and geared up to get their quarterback of the future. It's basically the plan that I envision for the Raiders that if you want, if you think you have your guy in this draft. Be aggressive and go after him. That's what the mm -hmm. Vikings are probably going to do. Yeah, and we'll talk about quarterbacks next segment. But it's also it brings up a good point, Mo. And and listen, we all have opinions, and they're just that. Some are more informed than others, right? <laughs> uh, but I will say this: uh, Lewis Riddick tweeted out, um, I think it was late late Sunday, early Monday, about people evaluating these quarterbacks 
in the draft and other players too, and saying, well, you know, this, this guy, this guy, that guy, and he's, he's terrible. He's that it's like, well, where did we, where did we say that a guy has to come right out of college and be successful? And, and if he's not, he's a bust, right? So people call him Bryce Young, a bust. People call Tyree Wilson, a bust. Um, it's amazing that not only as fans, so I'm not here, just, I'm not criticizing fans, but even those of us in the media, a lot of us will be quick to judge players. And I think Lewis Riddick's point was, in essence, and I'm paraphrasing, I invite you to go check out what he exactly said, because it's a longer uh, thread. But he basically said, who are we to quickly judge guys or say that, hey, a Drake may, or if you're talking about the draft, that these guys are, no, they're not going to be a good quarterback. How do how do you know that? How how can you say that? Well, because there are motion in this because you read that and read. It's crazy. And I think that that's what I would caution fans, especially Raider fans, because when you look at their needs and what they're going to do in the NFL draft and in the trade market, free agency, whatever, is that uh, you you have to look at the need and, and, and trust in the fact that the Raiders evaluation process i.e. their scouts, i.e. Antonio Pierce, the head coach, and his coaching staff, and Tom Telesco can make those judgments. But I think we're so quick to judge those names that I think people forget sometimes where, even in Raider history, guys like Jim Plunkett, guys like Rich Gannon, some of these guys that were just thrown aside as washed up and couldn't do it, ended up becoming some of the greatest players in Raiders history. Yeah, I read the tweet from... Lewis Riddick. And I, I agree. Like a lot of, and what I got from it was that while we can evaluate these quarterbacks for hours and hours and hours, you can watch hours of film and still get it wrong simply because depending on what their environment is, what they want into th their situation, it, it will, it can, and usually does impact mm -hmm. how well or how poorly they're going to play. Now, as he said, some guys just don't pan out. Right. You know, regardless of where they go, they, they get drafted by a team, don't do well. They go to another team, another team, another team. They just never pan out. But I will also say that these are, as you just said, these are all opinions. I mean, who's to say that if one person says this guy is not going to be a good quarterback, <clears throat> that it's going to happen. It's just that person's opinion. It has no impact on how well that player is going to play when he gets the NFL. So I, right. I wouldn't get too riled up about it because, again, these, these are all just opinions anyway. And no one really knows what's going to happen. Right. And I've gotten in some nice discussions, not arguments or anything like that, about people who disagree with my assessment. Uh, and I think it's sort of your assessment. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. That like, for example, Aiden O'Connell, good quarterback, will be an NFL quarterback for a while. I have no doubt about that. But I don't think he's a long term franchise quarterback. Well, how do you know that? Well, I don't actually know that I'm going based on what I've seen. And the sample size I've seen and based on his natural abilities. Now, I could be wrong. Maybe he ends up being an MVP of the league and the Raiders win the Super Bowl with Aiden O'Connell quarterback. Could happen. But I'm going based on what I've seen, what I've said. Now, you could disagree with that. I'm totally fine with that. I got no problem whatsoever. Uh, but I just believe that that's the case. So, But to your point, that's my opinion, <laughs> right? It yeah. doesn't mean it's it's gold. It doesn't mean it's right. That's just my opinion. And I, I don't try to – and I, as I said – recently i don't try to change anyone's opinion i just give right. my opinion and and give reasons why i think that way right and then we see where the cards fall how things pan out because one thing about the nfl and sports in general is we can all have opinions and we're all going to see it play out in real time anyway that's right that's right and i think that if you look at the raider situation in particular there's a lot of question marks. There's a lot of great happening. Obviously, we talked about it. Christian Wilkins, that defense has just gotten stronger. It can still get stronger, too. That's the that's the really nice part about it is if they address the cornerback position really nicely, then you start looking at that unit and saying, wow, okay, whew, I like this. And so I think Raider Nation's excited about that, and that's something that uh, I think is universal if you look at how, how much better that defensive unit is getting. Now, we start to look at the offense, and of course, Mo, coming in, you and I agreed, and we're going to talk about this right after we take the break which is the biggest need the Raiders had was a quarterback. Have they addressed that need enough or will they address it enough is the question. And if they can't, then what? So we're going to get into some of that. We talked about situations with players coming in and doing that. If the Raiders don't get a quarterback that they want in the first round and they have to get one in the second round, what's the chances that that quarterback is successful and can become a franchise quarterback? We'll go through the second round quarterbacks since 1970 that have been successful just to give you a sense for how it works out or doesn't and then we'll talk a little bit about the raiders plan a much uh, some raider fans have been upset i've been seeing it in my my timeline 
about uh, Antonio Pierce's comment about no Band-Aids, and then they signed Gardner Minshew, and people said, oh, I thought you said no Band-Aids. I think that's unfair, and I'll tell you why when we come back here on Silver and Black Today, the Tuesday edition. It's Mo, it's Scott. We're coming back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, Silver and Black Today, the Tuesday edition. This segment, all about the quarterback position, the quarterback room. I'm Scott Branson, joined by Mo Moten, my co-host. Mo, of course, a senior NFL writer over at Bleacher Report. You can also catch his work as a Raiders columnist up on sportsnot.com, where you can also catch my work, where I am a uh, writer and editor as well. So check it out. We appreciate you guys being with us. Make sure you subscribe to the show wherever you get the show. Okay, Mo, the elephant in the room, or at least there's two quarterbacks in the quarterback room. I think the Raiders still need one more. We've talked a lot about, I went live on Friday and talked about the draft, and a lot of Raider fans discouraged saying, okay, there's no way, it's impossible impossible they tell me for the Raiders to move up in the draft and get a quarterback they want a couple things with that and then I want to get your comments number one is we don't know what quarterback they want Bing, <laughs> right we don't know who they're in love with if they're in love with anybody that's that's the that, the caveat number two is a lot of things can happen uh, between now and then my belief and you tell me if you disagree Mo I don't think there's I, I really don't think there's any chance in hell the first three spots are available I really everything we've been hearing about the Patriots is that they are in on a quarterback. If that happens, the first three picks will be a quarterback. Then you get to number four, Arizona Cardinals. Now, to me, that you and I talked for weeks about the three spot being the one, the Patriots, that was more more than likely to be available. That seems to, at least by by consensus thinking, if you trust that, uh, the Patriots aren't going to do that. So if four is this next spot, that's the Cardinals. The Cardinals in the market for a wide receiver or some other positions on the line and so on. Um, but you talked about it, and I talked about it live. I took live callers on Friday about the Vikings and their trade and why it was significant for the Raiders because the Vikings now have the 23rd pick and the 11th pick. So if they want to move up to number four, they have some draft capital that the Raiders do not if the Raiders are in love with somebody and want to get up there and get the number four quarterback, whoever that is in their book. So when you look at that situation in the draft and you're assessing this based on today's knowledge, Mo, things can change tomorrow. That's the caveat. Based on today, if the Raiders love one of four quarterbacks, um, what is there? What do you look at the chances of them being able to even move up to be in the position to draft that guy? If they love one of four quarterbacks, I mean, there's still a chance because, I mean – Things happen during the draft, before the draft, that we don't expect to happen. <laughs> but I, what I anticipate happening is, as I said in the first segment, the Vikings moving up somewhere from three to five, right? So they'll they'll get the third quarterback drafted. Then if you talk about the fourth quarterback drafted, if the, if the Raiders really like J.J. McCarthy or Drake May, because there's some people that say J.J. McCarthy could be QB3, there's some people say Drake May could be QB3. Mm -hmm. So let's say... It's J.J. McCarthy, and the Raiders want J.J. McCarthy. He's QB4. The Raiders want J.J. McCarthy. They're probably going to have to get ahead of the Giants because there are rumors swirling out here in New York, New Jersey, that the, that the Giants may be interested in drafting J.J. McCarthy, giving him a, a redshirt year behind Daniel Jones, which makes a lot of sense because a lot of people say J.J. McCarthy, you know, in that Michigan offense, how, you know, how much can he do in a pro level? So that QB4 spot, you're going to have to get ahead of the Giants at six, which means, as you mentioned, call the Arizona Cardinals because I don't think the Chargers are going to help the Raiders no get their quarterback. So I think that would be the very slim lane for the Raiders to get up and get QB4. We'll be calling the Arizona Cardinals and saying, hey, we want to move up to number four. Yes, and there's another hungry a quarterback-hungry team in the division. That's the Denver Broncos, but the Denver Broncos are at a disadvantage because of their draft capital. I think the Raiders have an edge there. So uh, Raiders really looking at what the Vikings are going to do there. So so it'll be interesting. So now let's go on the assumption, Mo. Let's go on the, the – let's do the glass half empty for Raider Nation out there. Uh, let's say they can't move up in the draft and the four guys that they identified as the guys that they would go all in on are gone. So now you're like, okay, so now eh, we're, we're, we got to look at a quarterback later on maybe. So in the, in the first round, we're going to go offensive line or maybe cornerback, right? So those are two positions of need. So let's say they do that instead, and they're looking uh, for someone else. So now you get into a situation where you have, in your quarterback room, entering training camp in July, jumping ahead, 
you have Aiden O'Connell, Gardner Minshew, and let's say a second round rookie. Let's say it's Michael Penix Jr. Or if he falls that deep, we don't know. Or Spencer Rattler, or somebody like that who's more of a developmental project in the eyes of the NFL. When you look at that, um, how does your does your does your opinion of the Raiders and their ability? Because I've said the Raiders, based on what they did last year, should be a playoff team next year. Based on that, if that's their court, if it's Aiden O'Connell versus Gardner Minshew for the starting role, whoever wins wins. Um, what are what is what's your view of the Raiders going into next season versus if they get a rookie quarterback and, and from the and, and you, there's no guarantee that that rookie quarterback would start right Mo but you would be in a position where you're like saying okay now they have a plan for the next five years with a quarterback to develop into the starter so the Gardner Minshew the Aiden O'Connell that's just to kind of get you by until you get your guy ready to go does it change your perspective on this team if they're unable to get a quarterback uh, early in the draft. It lowers my thought on their ceiling. Mm. So let's say they had, they were able to get up and get a top tier quarterback, and that quarterback, you know, doesn't necessarily become be a rookie Pro Bowler, but he plays fairly well. I think you know the Raiders had a chance to win double digit games. If they roll into the upcoming season with a second round rookie quarterback, Gardner Minshew, Aiden O'Connell, I still think they have a shot to make the playoffs. I mean. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the Cleveland Browns, they they didn't have Deshaun Watson for most of the year. They got to the playoffs with Joe Flacco, Dorian Thompson had a start, Jeff Driscoll had a start in there because they have an overall good roster. And I think the Raiders defensively and even offensively, even without Josh Jacobs coming back, still got Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers, they dress the offensive line. They're going to have an overall pretty decent roster. And it, what I will say, though, is even with a second round quarterback, I, and I, if it's, I'll say this, if it's Michael Penix Jr., I think they still have a chance to win double digit games. I think Michael Penix mm. Jr. has a higher ceiling than some of the other quarterbacks that are going to go in the second round if he goes in the second round. And I think he can actually start right away. I think this, this situation where a lot of people say, well, a second round quarterback is not going to start. Derek Carr started in his first year. <laughs> As yes. a second round quarterback, so you really can't discount the quarterbacks that they that they if they do draft a quarterback a second round can't discount that guy. Most of all, I think Michael Penix Jr. of all could start, but again, my ceiling would lower if it's not Michael. If it's like a Bo Nix or a Spencer Rattler, I yes. think those guys would need more of a red shirt year, and then you're probably rolling with Gardner Minshew, and then I think the Raiders are in that nine ten win kind of territory era, depending on how things shake out. Right, and th and that's where I think I still think they can be a double digit win team and a playoff team with Minshew and O'Connell if whoever wins out there. Um, but I, like you said, the ceiling is lower, and I think that you're 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 prop perhaps better than you were last year, but not significantly better. And what concerns me more is just the future, right? Because you need that quarterback. And so if you don't address it this year, you're kicking the can down the road to next year. Next year's class isn't very good. There's a couple of good quarterbacks, but you're not going to get in the top three again next year. At least I don't think so, because you're not going to be that bad. You're not going to have a top three draft pick. That's for sure. I think the Raiders are better than that, but it's just an unknown again. And it's the most important position on the field. So that's what makes me nervous. So now I have here, if you're watching us on the screen, those because because we talk about it because people are like well who says that you know if you get Penix in the second round he can't be the franchise quarterback no one's saying it but I wanted to give just a little bit of of uh, background you look at second round quarterbacks the best second round quarterback since 1970 this is on NFL.com number ten Neil Lomax for some of you you don't even know who he is because it's old school <laughs> Cordell Stewart of course you guys most of you know that from early 2000s mid 90s Jake Plummer. And then you get to Ron Jaworski. Obviously, a lot of you know him from TV, but going back to the 70s uh, when he was a, a second-round quarterback, then Andy Dalton, a career backup. Randall Cunningham, here's a, here's a, here's a good name. Um, of course, four Pro Bowls and was a first-team All-Pro and uh, had almost 5,000 career rushing yards with the Eagles. Then you get to Boomer Esiason. Then you get to Derek Carr, by the way. Just Derek Carr that. ranked as, yes, as the third-best uh, second-round quarterback since 1970. So the last 53 years, then you get to some names you, you, you look at and you say, wow, Drew Brees. Okay. So the next two, the top two second round quarterbacks, Mo, are the only two drafted in the second round that won a Super Bowl since 1970. Okay. Drew Brees, of course, great career, Hall of Famer, 
Super Bowl champ, MVP, of course. And then Brett Favre, same thing. So Brett Favre, MVP, three-time league MVP, of course, uh, and uh, with the Falcons, went on to his career there. And and we won't talk about his post-career because we know there's some messy stuff going on there. But the, the point I wanted to bring up here is that the reason we talk about it, at least I do, Mo, and you can tell me if you know if you disagree or have a different point of view. This is why you have to go get your quarterback. It, because I get a lot of people, and, and I've seen some stories too from the media where that say, well, just because you get a first round quarterback, there's no guarantee. Look, 45% of the quarterbacks taken in the first round never make it. Okay, that's true. But I just showed you the best 10, 10 quarterbacks in the second round, taken in the second round since 1970. And only two of them won a Super Bowl. So again, your chances are better getting a first round quarterback. Nothing's guaranteed. So that's what concerns me about the future. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just saying the Raiders, if they don't address it this year, it just hangs a little bit over their head in my view, because what are you doing? You have O'Connell, you have Minshew. Okay, great. They'll get you through and they might even get you in the playoffs. No problem with that. But you're not at that point where you're like, this is our guy. We're sticking with him. We're investing in him and he's going to lead us to the promised land. And that's what concerns me. Long term, yes. Long but term, I, as I, I but as I mentioned, if it is Michael Penix Jr., I, I think he has a chance to. And I, this may sound like hyperbole, but I think he would have a chance to make that list. I do because too. if Michael Penix Jr. went through his complete collegiate career, going back to his time at Indiana, he was a healthy quarterback. I think we'd be talking about him as a first round pick. I think yeah. the, the the I think the his injury history knocks him a lot. We've talked about it ad nauseum. Mm -hmm. if, if he if he's mostly healthy as a collegian, I, I think we're saying he's a top you know fifteen pick or a team trades definitely trades back into the first round to get him. So I I want to just separate Michael Penix Jr. from regular I want to say regular but the average second round quarterback because this is a guy who whose biggest knock is injury. something that has something to do off the field his injury yeah. history now right. if you're talking about bo nix and spencer rattler again i think those guys need at least a year maybe behind the starter to to develop and maybe they could be uh you know long-term stars in the nfl especially bo nix but it's if you're the raiders and you're looking at this as we see two guys or maybe one guy that can fall in the first round as a franchise quarterback maybe they focus their development on that on that quarterback whomever it is Bo Nix, uh, Michael Penix Jr., Spencer Riley, whoever it is. Right. But we have to look at, okay, 2025, you know, Shador Sanders is going to be coming out. Are they going to have eyes for, for another quarterback who may rise up the draft boards next year? Will they trade up, be more aggressive next year like the Vikings this year? Who knows? I like to take these things at a step at a time because anything could happen, especially with the quarterback carousels we saw over the past week. But, but I think if you're the Raiders and you're thinking about this draft, Thinking about the right now, I think you're looking at okay. We bring in a, a quarterback and on from day two, and have that quarterback compete with Gardner Minshew, with Aiden O'Connell, and we'll see what happens. May the yeah. best quarterback win because let me tell you, when Derek Carr was drafted, he wasn't expected to be the starter right away, mm -hmm. but he had such a good preseason that they had to name him the starter because he showed it on the football field. So you gotta let some of these situations play out before again you dismiss a second round quarterback or dismiss a rookie before he even takes the field. Yeah, and I think your point about Penix Jr. Uh, and fall. Remember, before the national championship game, after the Pac-12 championship game, and I, they probably don't want to admit it, a lot of national media had him going in the top 10 of the draft. Yep. <laughs> they were glowing about Michael Penix Jr. And then he has the bad game against Michigan, and suddenly, well, now he's a second rounder. So... Again, opinions, they're entitled to him. Everybody's entitled to him. So I think you're right. I think Michael Penix Jr., if somebody doesn't already love him and take him in the first round and you're able to get him, I mean, the Raiders sit right now in the second round at pick number 44. They might have to trade up to get him if they were to do that in the second round. But um, I would look at him really more as a, a second half of the first round quarterback that they got in the second round, right? So um, that's very, very fortunate. We'll see what happens. But it's going to be interesting. I also think that the Raiders to your point about next year could end up if, if, if a player they really want and they feel is going to be available some somewhat later might even trade down in that first round and get some more picks uh, and including next year 
uh, and so that they ha they're they better positioned and, and kind of start banking some of that capital. So we'll see. But we'll get into that. We're going to be covering the draft coming up, obviously. But the quarterback situation, to me, is just – it just, like you said, long-term makes me nervous. doesn't make me nervous for next year because I still think the Raiders are a, a team that can make the playoffs very easily and should, in my view, with what they've done there so far. So we'll see how that goes. All right. We're going to step aside for our final break when we come back. We're going to close out the show. We're going to talk about the rest of, of a free agency in the AFC – in the AFC West and assess where the Raiders are compared to the competition. Yes, they got to chase the Chiefs. Everybody's chasing the Chiefs. But what about the rest of the division? What about the rest of the AFC? Where do the Raiders stand there? We'll talk about that when we come back on this Tuesday edition of Silver and Black today with Mo, with Scott. We're coming back right after these words. Welcome back. It is the home stretch here on Silver and Black today, the Tuesday edition. Mo and Scott with you. If you haven't already subscribed to the show, please do so wherever you get your audio. Also, if you're on YouTube, thanks for all the lively discussion as usual and the thumbs up. And don't forget to hit subscribe and the notifications bell so you know every time we have a new video. Okay, Mo, we talked about the quarterback situation last segment, uh, but we look at the AFC West. You look at the Chiefs. Chiefs went out and got a, a new wide receiver, Highwood Brown. They also re-signed Chris Jones. Um, in the draft, I'm assuming they're going to address some of the receiver position again as well, maybe even the tight end position with Travis Kelsey aging. Um, and then, of course, you have the Denver Broncos. We're not sure exactly what's going on there. We see the Chargers are in cap hell. Of course, they said goodbye to their wide receiver core. So I think they're going to be in the market for a wide receiver in that first round. You think uh there as well but when you look at the afc west and, and and again it's early still there's still plenty of time here for all these teams and the situation to change but when you look at the afc west so far and what's happened in free agency players kept players gone players acquired where do you put the raiders are they keeping pace are they behind the pace or are they ahead of the pace i think there's it's just a basically for me a standstill almost like a status quo because i think the chiefs are way up here and then mm -hmm. there's a gap and i know Raider friends are gonna say well the raiders beat the chiefs i i get that <laughs> but it, it, it's let's say the raiders play the chiefs 10 times how many games are the raiders winning how many games are the chiefs winning so the chiefs by the way won the super bowl <laughs> and then as you said they added marquise brown and now teams are going to have tape on eight and o'connell and they're going to be they have a better look at him you're going to be able to counter some of the things that he uh the team is able to do he's also learning a new offense so you have to factor in those things so of course i think the chiefs are at the top and then i think it's it's a it's a jumble mix uh the the raiders to me have the upper hand because at least they have a lot of their coaches still in place from last year the Chargers, their players are learning a new system i know a lot of respect for what jim harbaugh has done in his coaching career but now he's back in the NFL, as you said. Let go of his starting wide receivers. Again, new system coming in. There could be some bumps in the road. The Denver Broncos, to me, are at the bottom of the division. They got Jared Stidham right now, pegged as projected now as their starter. They let go of some guys, traded Jerry Judy. It, it looks it looks kind of messy in Denver. Uh, mm -hmm. If I'm a Denver Broncos fan, I'm, I'm concerned. But I think the Raiders right now, to me, you could say it's the Raiders or the Chargers behind behind the Chiefs and the AFC West. Yeah, and I look at the – and we'll see what the, the Chargers do in, in the free agents, the rest of the free agency in the draft. But I agree. I think clearly the, the Raiders' defense um, is getting better, and it was getting better towards the end of last year anyway. And so I look at that, and I say, look, the Chargers have – and I know how Raider fans out there who listen to our show feel about Justin Herbert, but he is – a very good young quarterback and they have that going for them but there are a lot of issues there too and i agree with you on the coaching situation jim harmob might do well there but it you know the switch over the change and everything and then you're changing the roster significantly it just seems to be to me going to be a real up and down year for them so i like the raiders to at least finish second in the division again now what what that means i don't know yet and and you're you're right about the gap between second place i.e the raiders and the chiefs at this point um it, it'll be interesting but i i do think that the the quarterback situation you have the same situation it's worse in denver you're right uh, you have jared stidham there uh and the raiders with the move with gardner Minshew to come in and compete with aiden o'connell whoever they decide to do whatever they'll still decide to do with the third quarterback in the room will will determine i think a lot of it but it's the, the AFC overall, if we climb outside the AFC West, 
Mo, there's, I mean, what the what the Houston Texans did in free agency has been remarkable, and they've gotten so much better. Um, and taken some gambles in a way because they put a lot of money out there for some guys, but um, the AFC overall continues to get strong. There were some teams weakened by free agency uh, up and down. I mean, Miami, I think Pittsburgh got better, even in the quarterback. You can say what you want about Russell Wilson and about Justin Fields, but they're better at that position too. So when you look at the AFC, what do you see as far as overall? Because at the end of the day, yes, you got to catch the Chiefs. Everybody in the AFC has got to catch the Chiefs, but what about the rest of the conference when you talk about opportunities to get in the playoffs. And not just because I'm here in New York, but you also have to look at the Jets. The Jets, Jets were, were kind of sleeping through the first few days of free agency. Then they bring, bring in Tyron Smith, who has an injury history, but when he's on the field, still a top tackle in the league. Aaron Rodgers is expected to be back. So the Jets are going to be a better team in the upcoming season. As you mentioned, the Houston Texans, what they did in free agency, bringing in Daniel Hunter, trading for Joe Mixon, adding uh, Al Shahir uh, from the Tennessee Titans, who Titans. played under D'Amico Ryans in San Francisco. They're going to be even better than they were last year. Deshaun Watson, if he's healthy, the Browns will continue to be in the mix. So there, there's a lot going on in the AFC. And by the way, Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen aren't going anywhere. So <laughs> the Titans got a lot faster on offense. So, so there's going to be a, some competition in the AFC. I think the AFC is still the, the stronger conference of the two. But if you're the Raiders and you're looking at looking at the landscape, you're going to have to go against these teams with premier quarterbacks, overall good rosters. This is why I say be careful about because a team played well the previous year that they're necessarily going to do well and the following year, because rosters change, teams regress, teams fall out of the playoff picture, teams jump into the playoff picture, it's going to be a dogfight. And, and, and you're going to probably need 10 wins at least to get into the playoffs. And it seems like we say that a lot about the AFC in recent years. Yeah, and I mean, even 10 sometimes, because of the to your point about the roster turnover, it's a huge deal. Because you, you're right, you could be a team that makes a deep playoff run, and then you got issues, and guess what? You're not even close to being the same team because you got to swap guys out. And even if you make even if you make moves that keep you even from a talent perspective, guys coming in learning new systems, you just never know. I mean, that's the crazy thing about about the NFL and where it's gone with the salary cap and all that stuff. So uh, it's going to be fascinating. But the the Raiders, I mean, listen, I I think fans have a right to be excited about some of the moves they've made. And of course, as we get up to the draft, the draft is vital because the draft. And the rest of free agency, as I said last week on the show, Mo, when you were gone, a lot of people, you know, they focus on the starters that the Raiders are signing in free agency. And that's great because, yes, of course, Christian Wilkins, amazing. But it's the depth you're adding, the opportunity to go sign guys uh, that, that are going to come in and contribute and be important parts and cogs in the offense, in the defense. Those are also important moves. And, of course, the draft and getting that young, cheap, got to say it, cheap talent on the books is important in developing them so that you can sustain some of that roster through at least the next four years, right? So you, you go out and draft well and things can change significantly as well. So all good stuff. And we're going to be here for all of it. And of course, we'll be back later in the week. We'll get to our Raider Nation mailbag in the next show and the voicemails. Mo, it was interesting taking live calls the other day, doing a live show. We had some good folks. Nobody, nobody uh, dropped any F-bombs or anything. It was nice. It was nice. But I know you missed the mailbag, but you'll you'll be back. And don't forget, you can call us 702 900 7869. I'm going to put the number up there for our video audience so they can see it 702 900 7869. If you want to leave a voicemail, tell us what you think about the Raiders. What have they done so far in free agency? What do they need to do? How do you feel about the quarterback position? Any of that stuff. Or you can critique Mo's first TV appearance on TBS last week. <laughs> Whatever you want to do, we'll take that. We'll take it. So all good. Mo, uh, before we head out of here for the day and for this show, let everybody know what you got coming up this week. I got a Bleacher Report live coming up on Thursday talking about the Raiders' top needs going into the draft. As we just talked about, they, they've they solidified their defensive line. No, no need to add on any players there, in my opinion. They got Byron Young, by the way, who could be a guy who could step up and his second year. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll talk about roster needs on Thursday. Next Monday, I will ha I will have my first Raiders mock draft. As you know, I don't do a lot of mock drafts, but I will have my first Raiders mock draft next Monday. Also oh, cool. on Sports Not, I will have a piece to be determined. Ah, 
the Mostradamus is going to emerge from his cave <laughs> and give us picks. Kind of like that. All right. So don't forget, we'll be back on Thursday and uh, we'll take your call 702 900 7869. Leave your messages, you know, minute, minute and a half, name, where you're calling from, and then your question or comment, and we'll get to it. If you want to email us instead, you can do that too. Mail at silverandblacktoday.com. That's mail at silver and black today all spelled out dot com mo my friend it was good to have you back we will see you later in the week good to be back all right for everybody here at silver and black today including our producer mike robier i'm scott Branson, former moton we will see you all next time raider nation take care and have a great rest of your week